Hello Nick Game fans, here are the awesome games you might have missed in June, beginning with Ghostware Arena of the Dead, a throwback first person shooter that released out of early access, and boy, it sure has quick or unreal tournament vibes doesn't it? Strangely enough, the afterlife in this game is just bits of code in which our heroine is resurrected by a character known as the wizard but is trapped inside an arena shooter and has to fight her way out. Interestingly, this has metroidvania inspired elements in terms of structure and exploration with a kind of weird and out there narrative as well. A game that is neat but not without its flaws is First Dwarf, an action crafting RPG with base building and tower defense elements in which you are sent to explore newly created floating islands in the sky after a sundering of the world. You are in search of critical resources to ensure the survival of the dwarves, building structures to extract these, but of course, your actions triggers enemies to attack. In theory, you can build defenses to help fend off the monsters, but that appears to be a little broken right now with enemies ignoring towers and running into your base and the balance feels kind of off as well but do note that this is an early access so let's see if this gets fixed. This video is brought to you by O vs the Mutants, a top down twin stick action roguelite in which you play as O, winner of 37 consecutive employee of the month awards at a pest extermination company who took the opportunity of the nuclear post apocalypse to pivot to become a mutant extermination company instead. Drive around in a variety of vehicles and mow down enemies, also using weapons like guns, a medieval flail, flamethrowers and even drones to take out waves of enemies. You are creating interesting and powerful builds in every run with the opportunity to defeat bosses and to take their vehicles, with terrain, elevation and physics adding to the fun. Since the play area is not just a flat map, so if interested, wishlist the game on Steam and buy it on July 18th. A very cozy title worth a look is Rolling Hills Make Sushi Make Friends in which you play as a robot chef who opens up shop in a new town and has to go about serving customers. This mixes a Diner Dash style time management game in which you are prioritizing orders and which customers to serve first with a more relaxing town exploration and friendship simulator game where you go about talking to the locals. However, the catch here is that this is on the easy side of things with almost no resistance at all in terms of challenge so it might have taken things a little too far in the chill direction but if that is what you want, this is a very chill game for sure. There is a subset of vampire survivors inspired games that have mixed in a dose of Pikmin, most commonly used in games where you play as a necromancer and such is the case with Be My Horde. You are commanding a massive army of the undead to kill your enemies with each fallen foe only adding to your ranks, making the swarm even bigger which is the core appeal of this game. In addition to the core action, there are meta progression elements in between runs as you return to your dark domain, improving your necromancy skill and constructing twisted structures with the souls of your enemies, and then to dive into the next run to see if you can get even further. It's a tried and true gameplay loop and is good with more to be added through early access with the full release planned for later this year. There were a number of notable cozy games last month, one of which is Kameru A Frog Refuge, a game that will be familiar to fans of Neko Atsume or Usagi Shima, the cat and bunny collecting games respectively, only with frogs in this game instead. You are purchasing and placing a variety of furniture and toys to attract the frogs, thereafter to take pictures of them to add to your Pokedex, and then you can collect, raise and breed them as well to the tune of over 500 of these. It is super cute and cozy, although I would have liked to see more variety in frog designs since they are essentially just palette swapped versions, but it is the game that I would recommend if you want a relaxing time. 
there has been an interesting renaissance of the real-time strategy game with a number of notable ones in development, see more in the linked video, with an indie release being TFC The Fertile Crescent. This, of course, is like Age of Empires in terms of the theme, set in the cradle of civilization, being a full-fledged RTS with villagers, resource gathering, farms, fog of war, towers, and of course, combat. This released out of early access and has a full story campaign along with a skirmish mode for endless replayability as well as multiplayer support, although being an indie title, I think you'll have trouble finding a match. Still, it's neat to see a game like this, so if you love the genre, this might be worth a look. Here's a co-op horror title that I had a good feeling about since Murky Divers is the latest in the line of first-person titles following Lethal Company and Content Warning about a group of friends exploring a dangerous location filled with monsters, but instead of the intended effect of a horror game, there are moments of levity and hilarity instead. You are diving into abandoned underwater labs to clean up the failed experiments of your employer so doesn't that just sound ominous, gathering up body parts to bring back to the ship to destroy while avoiding the monsters, with the credits that you earn being used to buy items and modules to improve your chances the next time around, and has done decently well in terms of sales, so let's see where this goes in early access. I have a soft spot for pirate-themed titles, with an interesting one being Republic of Pirates, a city-building game of all things in which you are building up a pirate utopia by constructing buildings, which I suppose might be a stand-in for Tortuga, where this is full-on base building with different resource production chains to manage. You can also trade goods and even develop the black market to enrich the lives of your people, with real-time naval battles, diplomacy with other pirate clans and powerful trading companies, raids to conduct, missions to undertake, and both a 30-hour story campaign as well as a sandbox free play mode so there's plenty to love for fans of the genre. One of the most hyped strategy roguelites kind of fell flat in Sandwalkers, a pixel art turn-based RPG in which you are exploring a post-apocalyptic world in search of a suitable location to plant a new tree city as well as the knowledge to revive the mother tree to save the world. It has an excellent narrative setup and gorgeous pixel art, but this is about as early access as it can get, with a bunch of reports about bugs as well as balancing issues. It can be unforgivingly punishing, especially in the first few runs, which might be par for the cause for roguelite, but given that their earlier game, Legend of Keepers, is excellent, I'm sure that they will get there over time, so I'm giving it a put on your wishlist for now rating to see if it improves. Image. Another game with a little bit of a rough launch is Sunnyside, a cozy farm simulation RPG, but with more realistic character proportions, taking place in the Japanese countryside. This is pretty much what you want from a farming game, with character customization, NPCs to get to know and maybe even fall in love with, along with solid farming mechanics, the ability to upgrade your farm, and also seasonal events. However, there's a bit of a sci-fi twist here, since you have a little robot companion by your side named Sparky, who is also amnesiac, so you need to help it regain its lost memories adding in deck-building combat in the caves, so there's a little bit of that as well. The developers have been hard at work, releasing 5 post-launch patches so far, which got the game into a good shape, and while nothing has been announced, they aim to continue to support the game for as long as there is demand for it. Here's an interesting release, since Dystopica falls into that interactive toy category of video games, which are titles without objectives, points, or even a win condition really, simply allowing you to interact with it and to make your own fun. This is a freeform city builder title like Townscaper or Summer House, only cyberpunk, having a self-described dark, cozy vibe which is not typical of the cozy game vibe which made this stand out. It is doing very well and impressively comes to us from a solo developer, making them one to watch with regards to their future projects. Rage Games were, well, 
all the rage last month, especially with the release of Chain Together, a multiplayer-focused title that has co-op as its main selling point and a streamer bait if I ever saw one, but if you would rather play alone, may I recommend Alt F4 2. This is the sequel to Alt F4 from 2021, which is kind of a viral hit, and I don't know why, but the 2 is joined to the 4, making it look like Alt F42, so maybe a space would have helped there. You play as a knight that is on a quest to rescue the king from his new chicken form, having to make his way past cars, bombs, and all sorts of traps in order to do so, with the ragdoll physics adding to the absurdity of the game. One of the most promising indie games also fell kind of short in Hashtag Blood, not to say that there isn't anything to love here, but there sure are issues. Of course, the main thing about this action-adventure game is the visuals, resembling a cartoon network show, and they have absolutely nailed that part since this game comes to us from an animation studio after all. However, the problem is that they are making a game and not a cartoon, with the gameplay and combat feeling a little odd. There are reports of bugs, of NPC dialogue triggers not occurring at the correct time, or of attack animations being too drawn out such that the combat is unresponsive, which I believe can be fixed over time. I do like the variety in boss fights as well as the exploration, so it does have its merits, but it's something that I wish was better, so I wanted to give them a shout out in hopes that they would consider to continue making games since maybe the sequel or a new IP from them could be fantastic. Similarly, Korean developer Team Sunit seems to have issues with bugs since their games have launched to mixed reviews and slowly get better over time, with that occurring in the cyberpunk roguelike platformer Blade Assault and again here with Dragon is Dead. This is a grimdark one of these with awesome art and animations as well as game feel, so it has the foundation to be great, so let's see how things go in early access. In fact, the release does remind me of the rogue Prince of Persia from May, which similarly launched with a lack of content, but I suppose that's a good thing since that means players want more. This game might not look like much, but the exploration platformer Leap Year is something special with the gimmick that your character dies from falling from a normal jump, so it is one part platformer and one part puzzle game, but there are also secrets and a familiar but mind-blowing twist which I shall not spoil, and while it's like 2 hours or something, it's worth every penny. Watch this video for the best games of the year so far.